Well, certainly from our perspective, it's segregation, and, and I think that's the biggest issue for us. Uh, the eco-compliant fuels being 0.1%, uh, they're very sensitive to any cross-contamination with the, the uh, deep-sea fuels, which are 3.5% sulfur. Eco-compliant so. fuels actually brings and introduces a new dimension, and that's the integrity of the fuel. Um, it has to meet uh, specific requirements, and any um, cross-contamination with other fuels can create a, a challenge for the user. New low sulphur fuels reflect the demands of today's industry, but they also present some operational challenges for users and suppliers. Under Marpol Annex 6, ships must be able to switch to a low sulphur fuel prior to entering an ICA. Many modern ships will have separate fuel storage for higher and lower sulphur fuels, which greatly simplifies the switching process and reduces risk. But storage and handling issues can arise before the fuel is even on board a vessel. Cross-contamination of fuels during bunkering is a major issue, and one that the industry works hard to prevent. Supplying eco-compliant fuel raises a number of challenges, but essentially it's about segregation. It's about tank storage, so that there's separate tank storage ashore, on board floating supply ships, the barges, and indeed the vessel itself. Uh, for example, on a tanker of this size, we have five sets of tanks, two of which will be in eco-compliant uh, grade, two in regular sulphur, and one in marine gas oil, all of which we take great care to keep segregated, and not just by compartment, dedicated compartment, uh, but also by segregated and dedicated pumps and hoses literally everything through from the load point to the actual manifold of the customer is segregated uh, and dedicated. For any ship receiving fuel oil, appropriate levels of segregation must be followed, from storage handling and treatment through to final combustion in the engine. Co-mingling different fuel types can lead to serious operational problems, such as leaks, blockages and at worst, loss of propulsion. However, there are situations where co-mingling of different fuel types is unavoidable. A way to ensure there are no issues is to test the fuels to be mixed in a laboratory or through on-board testing. This helps the crew to understand the measures to be taken and reduces operational problems during fuel switching. Most two-stroke engines, pumps and machinery were designed to run on heavier fuels. As the industry adjusts to the new low sulphur fuels, it is especially important to follow the ISO 8217 International Standard for Marine Fuel Products Guidelines on the correct storage and handling of fuels. Starting with storage. Drain tanks at least daily for accumulated water. Ensure the fuel is maintained at the appropriate temperature. Clean fuel tank bottoms at regular, scheduled intervals. Maintain fuel tank vents with the correct size mesh screening. With the treatment of fuel, check self-cleaning filters regularly. Keep strainers clean. Ensure wire mesh is in good condition. Maintain fuel at the appropriate temperature. When operating centrifugal purifiers, ensure fuel is within appropriate density parameters for the efficient operation of the purifier. Check that the purifier inlet temperature is correct for the viscosity of the fuel in use. Make sure that the purifier is operating at the minimum practical setting throughout to suit the vessel operation. Handle fuel at the correct temperature, pressure and viscosity. Clean fuel filters regularly. Calibrate the pressure, temperature and viscosity control systems. The bunker industry in adapting to handle the new fuels, they've looked at tank storage to have separation. They've looked at the configuration of the barge with regard to having integral pipe systems to specific parcel sizes. The key thing to do is avoid cross-contamination, be aware of the fuel that you're using and its implications. It's about knowledge, it's about education, it's about communication. In this program, we have seen how MARPOL legislation has changed marine fuel management systems. We have looked at the need for carrying both HFO and ECA category fuel, maintaining strict fuel segregation, 
always follow ISO 8217 guidelines from bunker to engine. The shipping industry is highly competitive and safety conscious. The engine is the heart of any vessel and efficient fuel storage, treatment and handling is essential for reducing breakdowns, costly repairs and at worst serious power loss. In the next program in the series, Fuel Compatibility and Stability, we look at the issue of managing two very different categories of fuel with distinctly separate operational characteristics. For further information and guidance on fuel storage and handling, visit the website at exxonmobil.com forward slash marine.